Arnold Crater. Hey, thank you, Bruno. I, um, you know, I'm glad I saw your, your innovation uh, presentation because I, you know, I grew up on the south side of Chicago and the guy that was following me around in all the stores that I went to, that was actually the start of the innovation according to your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty good, right? Yeah. You know, first, first, I like to just uh, I like to thank the um, the honored guests who are here, and um, just once again, and also like all of the people who were. Since we we kind of over time, I just want to like all the folks that are involved in in GTF to just stand up and, and be recognized. The the founders, the board of directors, uh, the current members, the volunteers, the organizers. All right, thank you for your hard work. And um, as, as you guys know, it's <coughs> difficult to say no to Puna men. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, so. When they ask you, you have to stop whatever you're doing and, and come take care of them. You know, um, one thing that I, that I, um, I have a slight problem with but is, is the use of the word technology. We overuse that word. And, and I view technology as should be transparent. Um, no, I don't care what we're talking about, whether it's education or whether, whether it's you know, government services, whatever. Uh, if we're talking about technology, I think we're missing the boat. We're down on the wrong hill. You know, we, we're storming the hill and the, the citizens or the students or they're in another place. If we're talking about what's in the, you know, how many servers we have or you know, the email account, those are capabilities that at the end of the day really don't matter. You know, and, and I'm glad uh, Simona was talking about the business case because, you know, I grew up as an engineer designing products and, at, at, you know, in Motorola, if, if you guys know, we are in a different place now, but um, we used to create technology that creates new markets. And we used to lead with technology. And you see what happens when you do that. You know, eventually you put out a business. We used to sell cell phones. We, used, we, we manufactured cell phones and sold them for uh, less than it cost us to make them. So even though it was an $8 billion business, just a cellular business, we, we, we lost on the volume, you know, it was, it was just a, the math was all messed up. But we were able to hide that because we led with technology. So uh, one thing that I want you guys to really understand is there's a fundamental difference between private sector and public sector. You know, in, in the private sector and in academia, which is still kind of public, but you guys are, you know, elitist and things like that. So you, guys, <laughs> so you have some other issues you have to worry about. Uh, I'm glad you graduated from NYC. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 And, and actually, in the, in the private sector, you get to sell your services at the, at the, I'm still, I'm not loud enough? No, because the recording, they cannot record Oh, okay, you just got all that on the recording, you know that, right? <laughs> uh, so, but basically, in, in the private sector, um, in addition to, you know, only focusing on shareholder value um, and, and making a profit, you get to sell your products at the, at the, at the uh, price that the market will bear, and um, and to whom can afford it? You know, if you can't buy a hamburger or a Big Mac from McDonald's, it's like big deal. Or if you can't afford a private education, you know, really, it's, you know, they're gonna still provide those services. So uh, in the pub in the public sector, uh, the public sector uh, is responsible for providing services for the public good, and um, to all its citizens, whether they can afford them or not. That's what you guys need to understand. So because this is, some of this stuff impacts how technology, the decisions that are made um, and, her, and how technology is implemented or how technology may lag. And I, hopefully I'll get to that in a second. Um, but anyway, so uh, for, the, for the actual citizen who can afford it, it's their right. You know, basically their statute that dictates um, that the public service and the, that, that how we deliver public services. And typically, those services are provided at a, at, at a discount or at a price uh, less than it costs to actually deliver those services within the public sector. 
Um, so that's, that's a real important point I want you guys to kind of understand because it drives everything. Um, now, so, so why is it that government agencies are sometimes considered to be lagging um, as it implements technology? And actually, one thing that you guys also want to understand is that the, every government agency that I've been around have hired some of the smartest people on the planet. You know, so it, whether they're experts, all of the subject matter experts, they believe me, they're, they're, they are in the government organizations. They're not just hiring people off the street. Um, they're very well educated. They're subject matter experts in their area. They, they are not lacking on hiring uh, experts and very smart people. But what you have to understand is that the public sector ecosystem is different and far more complex uh, than the private sector or, or in academia in that case. So, uh, so that's, that's, that's a point I want you guys to kind of understand. But so, so why is it that technology is always considered to be lagging um, in the public sector? And that, that's also a fallacy because if you look at most of the agencies, we're doing some stuff, you know. Uh, in every agency, they're, they're not that far behind. Uh, as, and, and, and some agencies are probably you know, more further along that have more money, the city, the county. Um, you know, I completely overhauled my, my infrastructure. You know, we're doing everything, we're current. We implemented you know, UCS, we have our own private cloud. Um, you know, so we, we're, we're doing the things that, um, that from a technology standpoint that um, that you guys consider we might be behind. We're not really that far behind, but we have some other issues that Simone actually uh, alluded to that impact you know, the decisions that are made. Uh, in the government environment, you know, um, each of the government agencies have to make choices and they have to shift um, resources around to provide services for citizens at a price, like I said, typically below uh, the cost to, live, to uh, deliver those and we have to sometimes maintain uh, assets well beyond their useful life. And, and that's because uh, there's multiple reasons for that. One, those assets tend to last a long time. You'll probably, even though uh, most of the organizations are doing things new, you'll probably find you know, some mainframe computers around. They're still running. Uh, you'll probably get on a train, and, and I'll be honest, some, Metro still has some 30-year-old 30, 30 trains that are still running. Um, however, one of the things that you need to understand that between public and private sector is like if, if the airline services, um, if an airplane doesn't fill all of its seats, they'll just say, oh, we have an engine malfunction and that plane won't take off. But if only one person shows up to ride the train, that train still has to run. And don't let the weather impact that because or and uh, don't let us have to if we try to raise our our price, our, our, the price of a ticket. Um, because remember that the, the, public, the public sector only can provide their services um, to citizens at a price that, the, that can be tolerated. That's the fundamental difference versus you know, the price that the market would bear. It's the price that the citizens can tolerate. So we can't just increase our prices uh, to cover our costs. Because if you see that right, you know, elected officials will receive tremendous amounts of pressure um, if they attempt to raise taxes to cover more of our costs, or we attempted to raise the price of a ticket. Um, so we have to deliver those services at a discount uh, to, peop to our citizens because it's their right. Actually, it's the right thing to do. Um, but so we have to eat those costs. Uh, and the government environment has to respond to crisis. Um, you know, at, within transportation, um, the, the recovery ratio for uh, a trip, uh, within the, 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 uh, the six county northern Illinois region, which is where RTA, C tier Metro, and PACE operate, um, we provide a little over 600 million rides per year at a recovery ratio around, of a statutory recovery ratio around 50%. So you can ride the, the bus for $2 just about anywhere in the city, but that ride actually costs about five bucks. Um, you can ride the train for about five bucks, you know, just about anywhere in the city and throughout the county, um, but that ride actually costs about 11 bucks. So those are the things, are the decisions that are, have to be made um, that, that forces government agencies to unintentionally neglect technology. 
because you have to focus on those things that matter at a different level. Um, and the optics, and actually, optics in government is a big thing because we can't spend a lot of money on certain things if our citizens are, you know, in a certain place. Um, so it, it just wouldn't look well. So we may not even, even though we have the money to spend on technology, sometimes we can't do certain things because the optics of it, uh, you know, if there's a crisis, if there's a flood. Uh, the Water Reclamation District, which is, uh, you know, a large en entity that probably is kind of taken for granted. Um, and this, I'm sorry to go here, but the, the Water Rec Reclamation District was primarily responsible for managing the safety of our drinking water in, in, uh, in uh, Lake Michigan and managing the pollution without our, uh, throughout the waterways. Um, has seven wastewater treatment plants throughout the county, or throughout, yeah, throughout, through, throughout Cook County. They manage over one billion gallons of biosolids per day, per day for residents, and, and, and that's, that's, that travels through 509, 560 miles of uh, sewers throughout, throughout the county, um, which has about 10,000 connections from the local municipalities throughout the city. However, and if they went out of business or they stopped, uh, and they provide those services at a tremendous discount, if they stopped, with, we would all, the disease would just run rampant and the trains will stop. Everything will eventually stop if they stop doing what they're doing. So they have to deliver those services. And then if you get a big rain, you know, the floods, or we get a, we get a solar, vo I mean, not a solar vortex, but a, a winter vortex that, that we had last year, and the trains are late or they're absent, that's, that makes the news. Um, but if you're on the airline and they decide they don't want to fly, they just tell you. And you'll, you'll get a cot and go to sleep and won't say anything. <laughs> I mean, really. So, uh, so I, I don't want to take too much time because I could, I could rant about this stuff all day. But there's, there's, there are some internal fundamental things that impact the, the lag in technology. Um, you know, traditionally, you know, IT, um, IT has some new people and some new blood in IT organizations, which is making a difference. But historically, IT departments have been focused on delivering reactive capabilities, primarily because they're focused on crisis. Um, so, and, and also, traditional IT managers or, you know, CIOs uh, have struggled uh, to present the true business case. They, and so, so as a result, the business units have, uh, they, they still have to do their work. They have to get their things done. So IT in the past, now we have a new breed of IT people, uh, are now, um, you know, we're changing things, we're aligning, we're partnering with the business, which is most of them, you have to drive, the business has to drive these things. These, you know, my, I tell my, my business unit that my opinion doesn't count. I don't, I don't care what I do or when I do it. Um, the priorities are, are given to me by the business. Um, but if I led with technology, I, I can do it. Technology, at the end of the day, is easy. I mean, anybody can install technology, but an implementation is something totally different. <laughs> it's totally different. So, uh, so I just, I'll just kind of end that general rant with that, but I just, I just want to generally say that, um, you know, there's a, there is a gap here that the Government Technology Foundation is filling, and that's this, this, this knowledge transfer and this, this sort of grassroots understanding of how, you know, the public sector works. You know, even procurements, and there's, there's one thing, you know, one of my, my chief procurement officer, you know, uh, and I'll just say this one last thing. Uh, I was attempting to purchase something on a spec-based spec -based bid about a, a week ago, and they tossed out all of my low-cost bidders <coughs> for various reasons. They were non-responsive. They said, we didn't want to comply with your contract. Just little things. But the rules that we have don't allow any negotiation when it's a spec-based bid. And they, were, they wanted to award to somebody that, that was uh, offering the contract at almost three times what we had budgeted. But the spec-based bid process forced that. That's how we end up with the $500 hammer. It's because the, the, guys, the guys at the low end, probably they got tossed out because of various reasons uh, within their response, or they were just deemed non-responsive. So uh, the, the procurement rules in government are totally different. The transparency law, you know, there's some things that, that this organization needs to teach 
small businesses, how to respond to RFPs, how to be responsive, how to things, you know, so there's this education, this knowledge transfer is, a, we have to sort of circle the wagons around uh, the citizens, if you will, and, and teach all of these uh, entities or stakeholders how to do business in this space. Um, and the, we're totally transparent and open. And uh, there's nothing you can't find out about a government agency. The things that I just rattled off about the Rotter Reclamation District, I just look it up. You should be coming to us and telling us what our problems are. You, the, it's all out there. I mean, it's, you can FOIA just about anything you want to FOIA. But don't get carried away with that. <laughs> <laughs> but you can. I mean, you can. So, uh, so it, just in closing, the, um, you know, the Government Technology Foundation, it, you know, it's, it's really a, at a, a good place right now. And, you know, Poom and Ellen, who, you know, really drive, another reason why I'm here, you know, in addition to all these other folks, is that they never talk about their companies when they're talking about this stuff. This is really for the good of other small businesses. So that's one of the, the charters for this organization. Um, we, you know, this organization really wants to be the trusted advisors uh, to government leadership and even staff because everyone needs uh, some, edu not education, but some knowledge on how to do things. For our vendor community, um, our, 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 um, our minority community, they need to, we need to uh, share and transfer knowledge so that we can make the entire ecosystem work better. So uh, having said that, I'd just like to um, say that this has been really good for me because, uh, you know, I think all of us are a product of our environment, and when you hang around with smart people, some of it has to rub off on you. So I'm just hoping that that happens. So um, that's really just about, that's all I have for today. I just want to say thanks for coming, and um, yeah, and I'm going to do that next after I close this one. Yeah, you see you jumping ahead. You read my notes. Uh, but anyway, so uh, so I just like to say in closing, thanks for coming, and I appreciate the, the opportunity to participate, and I'm excited about the government technology organization. And um, a note of business is that the, for those of you who are registered for the VIP reception, um, it, will meet, it will be immediately following this one, and uh, the volunteers will, will show you to the designated area. Thank you. <laughs>